Okay, in this video, I'll be explaining the hybridization of CH2CH2. The quick shortcut way of doing this doesn't really give us an idea of why we're doing it, but the shortcut is to count the number of atoms surrounding our central atom. So let's look at this carbon first. This carbon atom has one carbon surrounding it, another hydrogen, and another hydrogen. So we have one, two, three. And that indicates sp2 hybridization. We look at this carbon, it has one, two, three, and that also indicates sp2 hybridization. So if each of these carbons will have sp2 hybridization with a p orbital left over. The p orbital is left over because of this double bond, and double bonds indicate a pi bond, and a pi bond is just when p orbitals overlap in two regions. But anyways, let's get on with our structure. So we see here our electron configuration of carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. I omitted our 1s2 because it's not a valence electron. It's too close to the nucleus. It will not exhibit any bonding. So this makes it a lot simpler. So we'll look at these two right here. Four valence electrons in carbon. So we have two in our 2s and we have two in our 2p. Now we have two places where we can bond and that's not the case what we need. We need one, two, three places where we can bond, and we need a pi bond. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna bump, say, this electron up to, up to this orbital, and we're gonna hybridize. So when we do that, we'll have one here, one here, one here, and one left in our p orbital. That's gonna be used in our pi bonding. Now. We can count the number of orbitals so we can see that we didn't mess up. We have one, two, three, four orbitals. One, two, three, four orbitals. We have one, two, three, four uh, electrons. One, two, three, four electrons. So we're good. Anyways, I'm going to move this atom, so, or this atom, this molecule, so we have more room. Okay, we're going to start with this carbon right here. So we have sp2 hybridization in both of our carbons. Just remember that. So this is an s orbital, this is a p orbital, this is a p orbital, this is a p orbital, and this is our sp orbital, our sp2 orbital. And we have three of them. So let's take this right here. Let's duplicate it so we have three of them because we have three sp2 orbitals. Okay, now let's arrange them. I'm going to move these a little bit around here. And I'm going to move this one more over here. I got to move this one more too. There we go. I'm just making room for our uh, P orbital so it doesn't get really messy. So it looks kind of cleaner. Okay, now we're gonna need a p orbital because of this right here, we have one p orbital. So I'm gonna take this p orbital. I'm just gonna make it bigger just to over exaggerate it. It doesn't mean it's in a higher energy level, it's just so you can see the pi bond a lot easier. So we're gonna have this p orbital right here. Still gonna make it a little bit bigger. Okay, that's fine, it's whatever. It's not a big deal. Anyways. So keep in mind, our carbon is in this center right here. Our nucleus is in there. So let me admit that. Well, our hydrogen right here has a electron configuration of 1s1. So it has an s orbital with one electron in it. So it's going to bond with this sp2 orbital. And we have another hydrogen. So we need to make another bond. So that didn't duplicate. Let's try duplicating that again. Okay, so this sp2 and s bond right here because of that other hydrogen. So this hydrogen right here made a bond. This hydrogen right here made a bond. And now we have our p orbital left and our last sp2 orbital left. Now, this sp2 orbital is going to connect with this carbon right here to make a sigma bond. And remember, sigma bonds are just overlapping once. So like say these two right here will just overlap once. That's a sigma. However, a pi bond is when they overlap twice. So that's just some good vocab to know. Okay, so 
We're going to duplicate this so we have another SP2, but we have, once again, we have three. So duplicate, duplicate. Okay. There we have three SP2 orbitals. Remember, we're looking at this carbon now. So let's make our sigma bond. Okay, so we have our sigma bond. And let's put this right here. And we'll put, I'm gonna have to move this because I'm trying to make room for our pi bond. There we go. Okay, keep in mind we still have hydrogens we have to bond, so these hydrogens have circles because that's an s orbital. So we'll duplicate that again, and there's our hydrogens. Okay, so we all have sigma bonds right now, overlapping once. So, we still have that one p orbital we haven't filled in for this carbon, so we need to fill in that p orbital. So, let me just, actually, let me just duplicate this one. Once again, it's just over exaggeration. It's it's not like it's in a super higher energy level or anything like that. Okay, now our molecule's finished, but what, where does this double bond come in? Well, we have our sigma bond, so that counts as one, and then our double bond counts with these p orbitals. These p orbitals are bonding. There we go. That's kind of hard to see, but there we go okay so these p orbitals are overlapping to make a pi bond these orbitals right here overlapping once creates a sigma bond so what is a sp2 hybridizing causing an sp2 hybridizing is allowing for carbon to have three three atoms bonded to it and have an extra p orbital so we can create that pi bond so that is what our structure looks like. It gets really messy, but once again, our p orbitals are not really that big. It's just, I just over exaggerate them to see them. So that's it for this video. I hope it helped. Hope it didn't get too confusing.